Vue 3.4 dropped a couple weeks ago, and I haven't made a video in a while, so let's talk about what's new. The biggest differences are some changes to how Vue works internally that improve performance, but there's also some nice developer experience upgrades. So the first internal improvement is a complete rewrite of the template parser which is used to help compile our single file components. I'm not even going to pretend that I understand what exactly is going on under the hood, but from my little knowledge of reading Evan Yu's blog post, a couple hours spent watching some YouTube tutorials, and a few attempts of reading the source code, old Parsler relied heavily on string lookaheads and regular expressions, whereas the new Parser uses a state machine tokenizer based on HTML Parser 2. This means that it only has to iterate through the string once, giving us some nice performance boosts. I'll leave some links in the description if you want to read more, but to be honest, for most developers, we're not going to be interacting directly with these implementation details too often. What it does mean for us is that compilations and builds will likely see performance boosts, and other parts of the Vue ecosystem like Volar or Vue TSC will be faster. Next, there are some changes to how Vue approaches reactivity. Previously, if a computed value had to recalculate, anything depending on that value of that computed would also have to run, another computed or an effect, for example. Let's take a look at this in code. Let's say we have a ref called name, a computed property that checks if the name is my name, and then a watch effect that prints to the console depending on if it's me or not. Before 3.4, every time we change name, is me will be marked as kind of a dirty input that needs recalculation, but it won't actually recalculate until we have something that is reading this value, in our case, our watch effect. So we won't know if is me is changing until this watch effect runs. But now the way that computed values trigger effects, any subscribed effects will only run if the value of the computed changes. This is a more accurate and efficient implementation of user activity system. If you've seen my video on eager computed values, the outcome is kind of similar. And even in the view use docs for the computed eager composable, it says that we no longer need this in view 3.4. And then the other half of the changes are some good DX improvements, starting with some changes to define model. But first, I want to tell you about Vue.js Nation. It's a free event on January 24 and 25, and it has a ton of really good speakers like Evan Yu, Daniel Rowe, John Leader, and more. So there's going to be a ton of great information, and some of the projects that are represented might even drop some roadmaps. But it's free, so go check it out in the description. So going back to define model, if you use it in Vue 3.3 while it was experimental, it's now stable. If you don't know what it is, define model is a nice syntactical sugar that allows us to quickly create values that are used in a two-way data binding with a vmodel. Before, if you wanted to have a ref that models some input in a child component, that component would have to accept a prop and then emit an event whenever that input changes. With define model, view takes care of this for us, so we just have to use define model and we're all set. The next change is the new vbind shorthand. When passing a variable as a prop, sometimes our prop name will be the same as our variable. View 3.4 gives us a new shorthand to achieve this. So instead of saying colon title equals title to bind a variable named title, we can just use colon title for shorthand. I don't know if I'm gonna use the shorthand to be honest, but if you're annoyed by the old syntax, getting tired of typing everything out, just try it out to see if you like it. And then some of the other minor DX improvements are better error messages for things like hydration mismatch errors, and also shorten error strings in production to reduce bundle size. And then in a change that we could have seen coming, the reactivity transform syntax, which was deprecated in Vue 3.3, has officially been removed. But if you like the syntax, you can still use it with the Vue macros library. That's all for this video. I just wanted to get back on this channel and make something and hopefully keep making stuff throughout this year. So subscribe for more content. Let me know what you want to see in the next videos. And thanks for watching.